What specifically did you want to do with this film? Like, what, what direction did you want to take the franchise? Yeah, the direction for the new Leprechaun film is completely new. We're starting a new world, new, new uh, Leprechaun, new creature, new mythology. Everything is from a completely new perspective. Um, my ambition was to kind of go at it as, you know, say thousands of years ago the Celtics met some creature in the deep woods of Ireland, you know, what could that creature be that now we have this kind of funny mythology of like this guy on a cereal box, but maybe thousands of years ago it wasn't that at all. <laughs> and so let's meet that, that, you know, that monster and put that in a film. So that was, from the beginning it was like, how can we make something that is scary, like legitimately is going to make you jump out of your seat that's going to make you want to look away, that's going to make you want to puke, like what's what's something that it can do it in a really grounded, scary way rather than the kind of comedic way of the past. Uh, how do you work with an actor like Hornswoggle? Um, you know, he's, he's used to wrestling in the arena. How, what's it like directing someone who's used to that way of performing and getting him ready to be on camera? Yeah, I mean, the good thing about um, Hornswoggle is he's super experienced telling story visually. And a lot of that was a lot of what we were doing. So using his kind of natural ability to kind of express completely uh, without words, you know, because in a lot of this, he's much more of a monster. So he's kind of having to do that. It took a lot of that kind of ability of what he had done in the past. But at the same time, he's just like, he's got a huge endurance because it would take hours and hours and hours to get into this, you know, um, all the makeup and everything. And then half, instead of being five minutes in the ring, we're doing 12 hour days, right? So he had to like, it's a huge amount of, like he was in a lot of pain <laughs> doing all the stuff that we had to do. But having that wrestling background gave him a lot of kind of endurance and kind of, and the attitude to, he was just game for anything. So a lot of the time we had to look out to make sure you know, he would never complain. So we had to make sure he was doing, being all right and doing everything, you know, still going to be able to do it tomorrow because we had to shoot day after day. Is there anything from like the original series that you guys took? Is sort of like a fan thing or just a new the movie? There's very subtle nods um, throughout the film, little things that you'll catch, like, you know, one of the characters is named Jennifer and like there's a you know, red tricycle in the background of a shot and like a pogo stick and like, you know, like things like that. But other than, um, but nothing that's kind of substantial to the plot. It was just kind of like, be, you know, things that are kind of fun to kind of see that are there. Is it, to, is it like a little harder to reset a story and then start to do the reboot rather than work off of a series before? Or? I mean, personally, I find it more exciting to be doing something completely fresh because you're totally open to kind of any new ideas. Uh, whereas it's much more difficult when you're trying to really continue a franchise because so much has already been done mm. that that could have been done with that idea. When you start fresh, you're able to kind of go back to the base and say and do whatever anything you want is on the table, mm. um, which is a lot more exciting from someone who's on a creating kind of side. Then it's always difficult. Like if you look at, I think Nolan was talking about the Batman franchise, but also just in franchises in general. In the first film, he said it was great because you. You do the origin story, you do what is the meat, meat of that character, and it's really successful. Then the second movie, it's tough because you've done everything that you thought was great, but now you've got to do another movie. So your only thing you can do at that point is just make it bigger because now you've got more money than you had the first time. So that's mm -hmm. what he did with the second one. But then he said usually third movies are the worst because you've gone as big as you can go already with the second one. So what are you going to do with the third one? And so what he really tried to do was give it a conclusion, which a lot of... Um, trilogies don't necessarily do because they want to keep it going mm -hmm. and that is where so is there's a lot of restrictions that come from being within a franchise it was exciting here to do that first one again basically start from That's fresh cool. and do something new well in terms of actually tackling like the leprechaun in terms of like the mythological character um like he's known as someone as a trickster was yeah. it important for you to sort of have these trickster like tension building moments yeah. or were you more, fo more focused on doing like gore shock get a reaction moment? Both. I mean, I think the best kill in the movie, by far, the one that just, <laughs> even on set, everyone went, ah! <laughs> like, is a trickster moment. So it's both, it's both gory and him being smart about the way that he's knocking these people off. Um, so it was being, being true to, that was what it was about. How can we have something that is small, that, you know, is based around wanting gold, that is terrifying and is going to kill you and trick you? How do you take that? and do something new with it. Um, doesn't necessarily have green buckled shoes, but <laughs> is totally, but is honored, is honors the kind of the origins of the mythology that we know.
Are you a fan? Mogul Media TV here. Question. Do you think horror movies today are too comedy versus back in the 70s and 80s when it was actually scary with the killings like in the Jason movies? Yeah, it's not as much... I don't see a lot of comedy-driven horror. Um, I think, to a certain degree, there's the danger of today, I think, of them becoming too much like torture porn, where it's more about the kill than it is about the film or the story. That I'm not as much a fan of. So you'll see in this film, it's much more driven by the suspense and the buildup. Um, rather than just, it's still an R-rated film, so there's still going to be some pretty graphic stuff, but it's not, it's not just about how can we get to every kill. Um, it's much more kind of suspense and action driven and kind of the, it's to a certain degree an, an adventure film of getting from point to point um, than, than that kind of, kind of comedy driven or, or stuff. But um, most of the modern stuff that I like is the serious kind of more grounded kind of stuff.